Before we dive into object-oriented programming and start working on a larger project, I want to take a little bit of time to visit some intermediate PHP techniques that may fill in some of the gaps in your knowledge or may prove useful to you as we keep working. The first one of these I want to look at is variable variables. That is where the variable name is determined by a variable. Let's take a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up basic.html and I'm just going to do a save as on this file and save it as variable variables dot php inside that b2b sandbox now we'll see the file is right here and that's where we'll be keeping all of the files that we're working with and i'll go ahead and just change the title to to be variable variables just for reference and then we can put our php code here in this body block so we've talked about variables in the past and you're very familiar with using them something like a equals hello or we could have hello equals hello everyone and we know how to do echo a or echo hello to make it nice clean on the output i'll go ahead and put some br tags at the end of this and i'll do another one here so let's go ahead and load that up in a web browser just as a simple starting point localhost there we are b2b sandbox and then it's variable variables.php so there we are Nothing that we don't already know how to do. But one of the questions that often comes up from students is, what if we don't know the variable name that we want to use? What if it's dynamically computed? How do we go ahead and evaluate that name and have a dynamic variable name? So in other words, we would not know hello. Instead, we would have a string, hello, and we would want to use that string to return the value of the variable, hello. Well, it's really easy to do. All we have to do is echo and then dollar sign, dollar sign, A. So what that's going to do is it's going to take the value of dollar sign A and come up with the string hello, and then use that with the second dollar sign to come up with the value of hello up here. It works exactly like you'd think. Let me go ahead and just put in another BR tag down here, and we can load that up, and we can see that that's true. That's all there is to being able to use dynamic variables. Now, you may not have a good picture in your head of when this kind of technique might be useful. So I've made just a real simple example that I want to show you. I've created a file called seats.php. You don't need to copy it down, but you can. It's real simple. It just simply takes a set of seats. And let's imagine it's a classroom, and the seats are labeled A, B, C, D, and E. And there's a different student sitting in each seat, and we've assigned those to a variable. So then, let's say maybe through a web form, I'm able to get together an array of the seats that I want. So seat A, seat C, and seat E are the students that I want to reference or talk about or work with. Those can be brought in as strings, stored in a database as strings, sent on a web form as strings. And then what we'll do is we'll say, well, for each student, as the variable seat, just a for each loop, take each one of those and do this dynamic variable retrieval variable variables. So in this case, you can see that it should return back to us the student sitting in the seat A, sitting in seat C, and seat E. So if we save that, if we come back over here and let's just try it real quick, seats.php, you'll see that's exactly what we get. So it's a real simple example, but you can see how this information here, right, these items, could be pulled from a database or sent in a URL or web form and then used to reference something else. So that's the kind of case where we'd use it. Now there's one catch to this. There's one thing that makes it tricky and I wanna make sure that I highlight it for you. And that is, if you think about the syntax here, you have to wonder what would it do if we had something that was of this format? Dollar sign, dollar sign, and then the variable name, and then the item that we wanna reference inside an array. So in this case, we would, we would be looking for the first item of an array. So with this syntax, would it mean to, number one, get the first element of the array, and then evaluate that answer dynamically? Or should it evaluate var dynamically and then look for the first element of that array? So it's not clear which one of these we should do first. This part is clear, but then it's not clear if we should do the one before the dollar sign or the dollar sign before the one. So in order to make this unambiguous and to make it clear, what we do is use the curly braces. So in the first case, we would put the curly braces around the dollar sign var and the one. In the second case, we just put it around the first variable to let it know that it should pull that in first, then evaluate the first element from there. 
So it works a lot like parentheses do in mathematical operations, telling us which one we want to do first. We're just using curly braces. And that's only when we're really working with arrays that it becomes a problem. Most times it won't come up, but I just wanted to make sure that I at least gave you that footnote so that you don't run into problems with it. And that's all there is to using variable variables. Let's take a look in the next movie at some more functions that we can use, this time working with arrays.